So, welcome everyone to LTM 2019 in Saarbrücken. This is the state of the Libre Graphics presentation. And it's going to be an effing marathon. <laughs> Before we are done, we'll be exhausted and I'm afraid I will have to take you to the next speaker's time. <laughs> but it's for a good reason. I mean, there are more Libre Graphics projects than ever. There's more progress than ever, there are more users than ever. And every time Adobe or Autodesk or the Foundry does something stupid, we get more and more users, which is awesome. <laughs> What's less awesome is what I want to tell you first. This is Peter Little, Mr. Duck, who passed away in March. He was a professional in the print industry when he encountered Scribus, which was a tiny little wannabe tested publishing system. He saw potential, the true weight and knowledge behind it, and these days Scribus is truly professional. Then he went on to work with OpenSUSE and did a great job there as well. When he was present at LGM, he was one of the friendliest, most helpful people who was never afraid to share his knowledge with anyone. Let's remember Peter. And in remembrance of Peter, let's go to the first project. Weird. I don't make that sound. <laughs> the first project, Screamers. Like I said, Screamers is a full featured professional desktop publishing application. This year there was a stable release, it didn't have a lot of new features, but it improved full detection on Windows and it fixed some bugs with GhostScript. The development branch is a lot more interesting. After a couple of years of problems, these days the scripting module is getting really interesting. And they're also cleaning up the code base and making it easier to, make, easier to maintain. And really important, there are now streams at images to automatically create so everyone can test these new features. App images are awesome. I love them. Second layout application is laid out. Laid out is much more an application for experimenting with layout things. Doing fun and weird stuff. Like generating a physical flipbook from an animated GIF. You can create content in laid out using the node-based editor. The node-based editor these days uses Gaggle. And pretty soon it will also support Jimic. There will be a laid out workshop at Comic Book Workflow Workshop on Saturday, which should be really interesting. I've been ordering the projects by type, perhaps not always completely successfully, but from layout applications we go to master mm -hmm. editors. And the first one of those is GIMP. At last year at LGM, GIMP released their 2 10 version, which was a great event. And after 2 10, they decided to shorten their release, release cycles and add new features in every release. Which means that GIMP's releases are much more interesting than they used to be, much closer to each other, and that develop, developing on GIMP is getting much more interesting, which is awesome. They're now working towards GIMP 3.0, which means support to GTK3, and that looks like it's a huge effort. I've been attending the Inkscape Hackfest. Inkscape is also important to GTK3, and the amount of work I saw coming from that is enormous. From GIMP we go to my own project, Krita. We released two major versions this year. The latest release was yesterday. We now got four full-time developers, thanks to income from the Windows Store and Steam and all the donations we are getting, which means we can develop much faster. Krita got an absolute world first this year. Unfortunately, it's a Windows-only world first, because Linux graphics drivers are not up to real HDR support yet. Real HDR support means you can have a range from 0 to 1000 nits and get a huge amount of contrast, much better colors. And there is no painting application, commercial, open source, free software, whatever, that supports this yet, except for Krita. So what we are going to do next, that's fixing bugs. We've been hard at it already for the 4.2 release, 
and four or three in September, October, should be really stable. That's what we did our fundraiser last year for. From Krita we go to my paint. My paint has changed over the years. It started out as a really simple, infinite canvas, sketching application, not much gooey, just dive in and paint. Then for a period it started getting lots and lots of UI and started looking like any other painting application. These days interesting stuff is happening. Brian Dietler, Brian Dietler has been focusing on emulating paint media, putting, as he says, the paint back into my paint. Dietler, I can even go even do it. That's probably a USB stick problem. Come on. This is not my laptop. which is quite difficult, it involves a lot of mathematics, a lot of memory usage, um, so it works nicely, the feel is good, the compatibility with traditional pixel buffers is not there yet, and there are quite a few performance problems, but still, pretty good results. Um, I think right now it's the only application that actually does this. Uh, Brian is also working on other interesting things like getting uh, feel, the feel of a realistic canvas, uh, which he does through pump mapping. Uh, one problem is he is on his own, and that means that he could really use some more help. It's a lot of work, this stuff. From my paint, we go to something that got resurrected a couple of years ago after a long dormant period. That's Drawpile. Drawpile is an application that allows collaborative painting on images and animations which means that people all over the net can work together and paint on the same painting. They've been releasing version 2.1 earlier this year, and now they're working... Come on! Uh, I'll just copy everything to the desktop. Makes it easy to find the way as well. <coughs> now I got your computer. You can't cheat me again. Knock <laughs> 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 metal. <laughs> so Dropbox now supports Open Raster, which is one of the standard file formats for inter interchange that we developed here at LGM. They are working on much better performance, the, especially networking performance, adding layer groups and wiping brushes. Photoflare is a newcomer, at least relatively. Uh, it's a cross-platform image editor built around graphics magic, which means it uses graphics magic for import, export, filters. It started out as a C++ port of a Delphi-based Windows application. Last year they set up a release system, which means it's much easier to get their work out to the users. They're creating automatic app image builds and they are also in the Ubuntu and Debian repositories. And in the future they want to introduce support for layers and wiping brushes. From raster editors to raster libraries, well, SF2 is not really a raster image library, but it's closely connected. It's a library that allows you to work with metadata, like XIF, IPTC, or XMP. It's really widely used. I don't know of any program that uses that supports metadata that doesn't use XIF2. Creative uses it as well. It's, had, it's got a long history. It's very dependable. And the community is growing steadily, which is pretty good news for such an essential library. In the future, they will 
uh, work on restructuring the library internally and getting rid of deprecated uh, C++ features, which will also help applications using EXIF2 a lot because we would get rid of all those warnings as well. Gaggle. Gaggle and Babel are libraries for manipulating hybrid that pixel buffers. It's, among other applications, the core for GIMP 2.10. Space Innovation is the name of the project that's currently taking most effort. It's support for call spaces other than RGB. This means that CYK is coming also to GIMP. And Gaggle is getting its own UI application again to help developing the library and experimenting. See you at Eugen Plus talk here in this room at around 10.50. Jimmy. Jimmy is a hugely versatile framework for image processing. It's, it's basically a research project that suddenly turned out to be very useful. There are Jimmy based plugins for applications like GIMP or Krita or Paint.net. There's a standalone application, a web version, where you can just do the weirdest things. There are now more than 500 filters in GIMIC, and let's look at two new ones that are pretty impressive. So you take a flat colored image, and GIMIC will make it sort of 3D. Or you take two images, one you call the style template, the other is the image you want to change, and it will make the image, remake the image in the style of the style template. From here to 3D, Blender. Do I need to tell anyone what Blender is? Well, Blender is the free and open source 3D creation suite. It's got the entire 3D pipeline covered from modeling, rigging, animation, simulation, rendering, compositing, motion tracking. There's even a 2D animation module in there these days. Coming in July is Blender 2.80, the most anticipated Blender release ever. It's huge. The new viewport, the, 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 the grease pencil, the workflow, the new UI, it's, it's going to really shake up the industry. Compared to that, Dust 3D is much more specialized. It's a 3D modeling application with an emphasis on getting quick results. It automatically generates a mesh from what you draw. The first beta was released last year, and they are aiming to release the final first what, final 1.0 version this year. <coughs> now I need to do some tricky stuff because KD and Live is up next. We're going to talk about video. Um, for video, I need to show a video. <coughs> KDA Live had a huge and important release this year. They put three years of work in uh, the current release. Completely rewritten the timeline. Rewritten UI. Focus on stability. And that will be the focus for next year as well. Let me I've got another video, that's got the Inkscape video. I got that one yesterday. That's got sound, the word. Another factor application is the SD1 project. 
Uh, SP1 to the zero is a cross-platform vector-based association program written in Python. Uh, the developer of SK1 used to have two main projects, SK1 and Uniconverter. Uniconverter is an application that would convert from one vector form to another. For to the zero, they decided to make Uniconverter part of uh, their, 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 their SK1 project, meaning it's no longer a standalone application other projects can use. They will explain, the, there's a talk about the concepts uh, this, uh, this, this LGL, I saw it announced, and they're expecting to get their first really stable release out this summer. SK1 is a project that has quite a long history already. The next project is completely new. It's called OM or OMFIT. It's a vector graphics editor where actions on shape objects are executed by objects, not by tools. It's not tool oriented, it's non destructive, object oriented. It's much more technical than Inkscape. The concept was inspired by Cinema 4D mainly, uh, but it's entirely in 2D. You can do weird stuff like add a clone object to your object and the clone object will clone your first object and place them and then you can change the parameters of the clone object and your image will change completely. There is a talk about Omfleet on Friday. It's currently developed by only one person and he would love collaborators. It's already got quite a few uh, features. Then we go to Birdfront. Birdfront is a bit of an old bird here. It's actually an open core application. It's a true type font editor, and there are paid versions that have more features, like support for OTF fonts. It's considered by its developers to be almost complete, but they did add a few features like better TTF parsing, support for Unicode 12, and an HTML preview template so you can see your font in context. Then let's go to Shotcut. I accidentally did KDN Live too early. Shotcut is just like KDN Live, a free and open source cross-platform video editor that uses the MLT framework. The difference between this and KDN Live is that the Shotcut developers are also the MLT developers. They released their version 1904 in April. This also represents three years of work. It's got a large team, it's got a large user base, but the main activity is just the two MLT developers. The team really needs to grow. They added a couple of really cool features over the past year, uh, among others keyframes, but also uh, using Qt WebKit to create uh, um, subtitles and effects in HTML. These were video editor application projects. Murefna is a project that creates videos, but while they're creating videos, they are working on a bunch of animation applications like Syndic, OpenTunes, Papagayo, RenderChen. Papagayo is for lip syncing, RenderChen is for rendering whatever you create. Um, they actually imported Creators Assistant tool into OpenTunes. It's not accepted by the official OpenTunes project yet, but they've got their own builds. The team works on an open source enemy series called Morefna, which is based on the traditional Russian fairy tale uh, called Maria Morefna. But the animated series sets the events in the future sci-fi environment. The new episode, which will be released today, will be shown at LGN as part of Film Needs Free Software. That's on June 1st. Now we've got a funny little project. It's really distinct and individual. It's also a video. It's called Gloss Before. And uh, the translation given by the author is the glass eater. It's, it's a stop motion feature. It's done entirely using open and free software. The images are captured by hand and then put into open tunes. And Blender is used for compositing art for adding the soundtrack. And I've got a little teaser video for you. Go on. I can double click if I want to. It's me. Let's try that. Does that work? Yes.
I would like to see the final reaction. From there we go to raw editors. <coughs> dark table. Dark table is a high precision raw converter and digital image manager. It's by now 10 years old, so it's a proven project. And because it's now 10 years old, the team has promised to provide cake to us. <coughs> the stable version has, has seen a lot of useful changes. New image editing modules, export modules, UX improvements. And the team wants to thank Pascal Aubry. He put a lot of effort into the development. As you can see, there's so much new stuff, they could barely fit it into the slides. Photoflow. Photoflow is a raw a raw image editor. It's by now five years old and it's under active development. What's really cool about this is that it's getting advanced color management. It supports the open color library, which means that it can do a lot of HDR images. It's also based on the FIPS processing pipeline. FIPS was created uh, at the National Gallery in London, if I remember correctly, to handle high resolution scans of paintings. And then you're talking about hundreds of thousands of pixels in either direction. So it can handle really large images really well. It's also taking care of improved uh, usability. And like every actively developed project, too many fixes to mention. Then we get to Filmulator. Filmulator is a raw image developer application. With a twist, it tries to emulate the way you would develop film, except on a computer. An interest, interesting part of this is that at one point, LeBro had lots of emotional impacts, and they removed that from their distribution. So Filmulator has created a new library called LibRT Process that uses the algorithms from the raw therapy application. The library makes it possible to share new raw development algorithms with other applications. Code reuse is good. So what's next for them? They want to add better library management to the application, but LibRT Process is what's really interesting right now. And at this LGM, there's a meeting on Friday where we can all discuss what direction this project should take and how we should continue with it. Then we get to education. Floss Manuals Francophone. It's a project that collectively, collaboratively, creates manuals for free and liberal software in French. Uh, they're creating books like uh, Blender for Female Editing. Nine people with a widely uh, varying experience of Blender got together and wrote a whole book in five days. They also created a bunch of videos. Sid Hitchini, he wrote a new book about scribbles for beginners. Well, Elisa de Castro Guerra, she wrote a book for, about Inkscape for beginners. Uh, they've also helped Sebastian Asch in writing a book about writing books for school. And they are helping the English language post manuals website by hosting their infrastructure, hosting them on their infrastructure. And they're getting their books actually into libraries and universities so people will encounter free software because that's often a huge problem in education. How do you make your students encounter free software and learn about how that gives them freedom of expression, freedom with their tools? Afgal Association Francophone de Trafis Libre uh, is an association whose goal is to promote the use of free graphic software for professionals. Uh, Afgal organizes workshops and events and also uh, uh, the Open Video Game Award. If you make a game with Blender and Godot and other free software, you can submit an, an, your entry for the contest. And last year there were four submissions. The winner was a game called Unhack Night, which you can download from afgrow.org. Active Design is an art school in France that mostly retrains adults who are looking for a different kind of job. Uh, they actually have 25 students this year, which is quite a lot. It's, 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 it's a real school. 
Uh, it's got its own studio where people can work with free software. Then we come to Lila. Lila is also a French nonprofit. Their main claim to fame is the work they do on Zumarmot, uh, an open movie project. And in order to improve Gimp so it's usable for creating an open movie, uh, Jean hacks on Gimp and has been hacking on Gimp for quite a long time now. It's one of the core developers. This year, uh, the Framasoft, a French non-profit, commissioned a video for their fundraiser. They did a lot of design work for the Free Software Foundation and they took up work on GMIC. Still, Zumarmot is their main project. <coughs> Coming to Texas.us, we are going from France to the US. It's a website where you can get tutorials and workflows for working with photographs, raw images. <coughs> The focus really is on photography, and they uh, promote the use of free software projects everywhere. The forum is by now four years old. The community is growing. They are also making a, setting up a library of raw images by created by as many cameras as possible, which is a huge uh, testing asset, especially for software developers. They are still not complete. And of course, they won't ever be complete because new cameras are coming out all the time. But they ask everyone who's got a camera, please contribute, create samples for them, add missing cameras. They're also publishing articles and tutorials. They, are, uh, they, they have a community where people share their raw images and their workflow, creating a photograph from a raw image, so everyone who wants to uh, learn how someone else does something with the same source material can compare what they are doing with what other people are doing. <coughs> also present here at LGM is Upstage. Upstage does cyber forums. At first I thought it was a spelling error, but it means they do interactive art performances on the internet. The project has been around for 15 years, but the software was falling behind the times. It's the features, they, they couldn't keep up with the features of other platforms, so they decided in 2018 to begin a complete rewrite of their software. This uh, video is still uh, using the old Upstage uh, platform. It's called Letters to the Earth. For the rewrite, they would love to help, have help with programming. Uh, the impression they are giving me is that they are still looking for what they exactly want to do and want to have. So if you want to have a say in what's going on, in, on, on this platform, this is the time to join. Praxis Life is, has been around for quite a long time as well. It's a hybrid visual life program, ID and runtime, and that's a mouthful. It sort of is like small talk, sort of like Iran, sort of like Extempore, but all known in Java. Uh, it is it uses the processing library, a G-Streamer, and lots of custom graphics uh, to create beautiful art that you would show off live. The latest release was done shortly after last year's LTM, and it's got a huge amount of improvements. It was also re-licensed to the lesser blue public license. So people creating a project could package the code with the project without having to worry about the license. Then they were sponsored to get the Java bindings for JStreamer in a good shape and had their first stable release. This was the last project. I hope I didn't speak too fast because I wasn't sure I would get through this in time, but I see I did. One thing I wanted to add is that 
being here at Liberal Graphics meeting means that what we are doing is we are creating tools that allow people to tell their stories. Telling stories is what human beings do, what makes us different. Um, these days you can't tell a story to an audience that you cannot reach. Audiences want to have electronic, digital stories. That's what they're used to. So what we are doing is giving people the tools to tell their stories in the world. <coughs> and that's really important. That's why I'm here. Thank you. <laughs>